so this is a uh, 42 and then I took 42 and I multiplied it by uh, phi 1.618 and then I divided it by 1 or 3.14 and got 21.64 blah 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 so this is really 42 with 21.64 It's an interesting slow pulse. It's not really completely balanced frequency. You can see it fluctuating into like a circle and a triangle. But that kind of stuff is very interesting to me how many shapes that it will make in that sense of its forces, um, meaning that, that the, these two frequencies together are kind of like creating a multi-dimensional structure in, in, in many different forms. Volume has a key role in all this. Um, too much amplification definitely can just cause it to be chaotic. Too little, it's just a ripple. Which is a very interesting ripple though because it pulses at a very low frequency um, so it's weird that they do that together and they interchange that way so I'm going to try a couple more frequencies with the same kind of combination pattern of multiplying it by 1.618 and then dividing it by 3.14 see if I turn up the other light interesting that it kind of does this weird back and forth thing. I could see it in the water so I know it's happening. It's not really <laughs> a frames per second issue like some other times it can be, but uh, I can actually see the water moving back and forth doing uh, its own fluctuation. So I know it's not my camera doing those things. But it's cool that it, it creates that inward pulse. The frequencies are very close together, you know, 21 and 42. I mean, they're almost octaves, so that's why it's doing this. If it was 21 and 42, it would be almost the same frequency, and that pulsing would stop. And I will show you that right now. I'll turn it up just so the main volume up. It was kind of hard to get these two frequencies to be in balance with each other technically. Um, so let me turn down the 0.64 back down to zero. Bear with me here. You'll see it slow down. And there we go. See that? Once it's an octave, there's no more pulse. But just a slight little bit out from one another creates that nice interval. It's 0.1. Actually, that's 0.01. Going up by 0.02 and so on. Seven. 
a little slow. It'll start to speed up as I go higher. We're at 21.27. You'll see this frequency start to bounce around a lot faster as I go up. There's a good balance, see right there, and that's 21.43, 21.42, right there. That small point value makes a big difference. I see it in the water changing back and forth, the waves themselves. So once again, this isn't an, a frames per second issue. I change my lighting that's not changing the lighting on the the lights themselves this was changing the lighting on my phone uh, I can adjust the aperture up and down and so I turned it down to get less light and now you see more of the pulse of what this frequency is doing it's more of a bubble looking type of uh, situation Let me take some pictures of this can also turn the, take this light off right here, Whoops, which wasn't even on, this one does add a little bit of effects to it too, see the yellow light, this light sucks because I had to clip it on my phone. add some dimensional yellow into it and when I take pictures and stuff it'll the yellow will look uh, pretty interesting just gets to show you that the more dimensions that sound is a real sphere and this is the pressure point of that sphere the sphere technically is not just this this is just because of the restriction the sphere is actually these things out here it would just look like that to you like when i do bubbles it would just show the spherical pattern from that center point which is a torus four collapsing toruses three-dimensional in their way all collapsing in on themselves and technically it's not collapsing in on itself it's rotating rotating opposite rotating rotating opposite and that continuous flow keeps everything circular this is why there's no way anything in this universe is flat or linear in that sense i know i get a lot of arguments about this but this is once again a perspective of of our minds um, when we only understand things from a simplistic point of view of function itself and take away all the, the theories and ideas, we can see that there's more things going on than what we can establish as this is pressure and waves, you know? This is way more to me than pressure and waves. This is balance, this is cycles, this is symbiotic relationship between forces this is so much more and if this is the way like we can kind of integrate these kinds of ideas back into our lives we can kind of go back to a more simplistic action you know like this is all just actions right here this is just a behavior this is consciousness you know Consciousness is a behavior. It's an action. You don't think it. You do it. Animals don't sit there and contemplate consciousness. They use it in the sense of being able to evolve from it. One animal evolves and does something different. The rest of that species evolves with it. That's an action. That's a behavior. 
Conscious is a behavioral action that we have lost sense of because we don't act things out anymore. We don't take the actions into our own hands. We just think them and think that's good enough. And that's not. Our thoughts are important, but that's on a microscopic quantum level. Actions is the physical level of what you can take and do with your life. That to me is living life, you know? Thinking life is one thing, but creating it and being part of it and doing it and experiencing it, that's a behavioral thing. That's how conscience evolves. And that's how conscience evolves us. So we really need to start thinking outside of ourselves. Stop thinking in the sense that you're going to gain consciousness or an awakening or a, a some type of nirvana, you know, when that stuff is all around us. We're in a universe of cycles and balance of harmony right now. How long did you think it took to make this universe? It did not happen overnight, you know. It took eons for it to just create these moments that we have. And if you're going to abuse that, then you're just going to be in a stagnant state of mind all the time trying to understand something by your own frame of thinking. You have to stop thinking so much about what you think. Don't think about what everybody's thinking and just act upon the intuition that you have creatively by doing something. Uh, it doesn't matter if it's your job or anything, a conversation. It's just, it really just doesn't matter. It's your actions that matter. It's your body language that matters. It's your voice that matters. I tell all the people all the time, you could have a stronger voice in what you do if you used it more into the sense of not what you believe, but the idea of the function that you've created. In other words, a lot of researchers spend a lot of time explaining what they're doing. And they're only explaining it from their point of view. They're not explaining it from the actual function itself, the creation itself, the consciousness of itself. They're trying to give it meaning, and it already has meaning. It's each going to mean something different for us. That's not anything wrong with that. That's how things evolve when they mean different things to us. We all feed off of that information. That's the living information all around us. The frequencies and vibrations that are all around us, within ourselves, in our minds. Thoughts are very important. Thinking is important. But you have to be more of the observer thinker. You have to go back to your roots. You have to take in the things that you observe and think logically about it. Break it down. Be simple. You can't. And things in life are not that complicated that you have to think about it as like rocket science. Life itself is pretty basic. And if it's going to be a conscious thing that you're going to be trying to achieve, then you need to understand you're already achieving it by behaving with it. You don't gain it. You don't achieve it. You do it. That's, that's ev evolution. That's why humans haven't evolved to me. You think we've evolved because we have technology. That's technology evolving, not humans. Technology is an extension of nature. We've evolved nature, yet we have not evolved ourselves. We work for nature we enslave ourselves for it when we need to be one with it. All this technology crap that we buy and we do, we all work for, that's all nature. It's refined materials, refined function, and they use it against us. How could they use nature against us when we are the ones that observe nature and, and, and take from it and create our lives around it? I don't understand this anymore, you know. I'm, I'm at a loss for like, 
where human beings have disposed themselves to belief and words in general, the separation between mind and reality. This frequency is so crazy because it's just acting completely different all the time. It doesn't want to go and rebalance unless I find that exact point that I was at. And it seems very difficult to find that exact point I was at. I have to move the tiny volume knob just barely up, the main volume, and just let it do its thing. It's like, it's like life, you know, you kind of got to go with the flow and let it do its thing. And then it all of a sudden all clicks and it works for you. It becomes this balance, it becomes this cycle of all the frequencies and vibrations around you. It takes time. Time's an illusion in that sense of what we've based it on. Time to me is something else that's just a distance of measurement. Sometimes these things when I'm doing them, they require you to just be really, really patient. And when in that you learn a lot about yourself sitting here you know, for me, I'm just sitting here all by myself in a dark room. So, watching and looking at this screen until I find the perfect moment. Then I, I apply that to my life. A lot of people ask me, what's the purpose of this? What's the point of this? I can never explain any purpose or point to anything. Only that it's an experience, then that experience itself was meant to evolve other experiences through us all. Sure, I can take all the values out of this. I can use this mechanically, but I can also use this mentally. A lot of times when I'm talking and doing things, things become a little bit more harder to control. This is why I don't talk in a lot of my videos and stuff when I do cinematics. I'll just say the frequency and then I'll just be adjusting things all quietly. Because I'm kind of zenned out away from the intuition of, of the water itself. I'm letting it speak by itself when I don't do things. The more I talk, the more this just gets jumbled, you know. I can't balance it out because I'm talking. So I'm going to turn this off.